Not only are we hunting eggs, but we're cooking up our favorite Easter side dishes. Praise the Lord and pass the biscuits. We hope everybody's seated around the table. Gather hands, bless the food, and let's eat because it is a glorious time to celebrate Easter. It is. So what are we talking about, really? Probably our most perfect side dishes that we've ever had at Easter. We'd like to thank Chef's Temp for sponsoring this video because when you're cooking, you want to make sure that it is cooked right and it's at a proper temperature. Whether it's a steak, a baked potato, or bread, this is what you need to get it right the first time. And I think we'll just start with the one that I think you should start every Easter with, and what is that? Deviled eggs. Let's talk about some tips for these deviled eggs, you want to? A fresh egg if you can find it. I'm talking fresh. I want you to sneak over, put your hand under that chicken's butt, and just sort of walk around till it lays that egg. That's what I'm talking fresh. But if you can't get a fresh egg or you can't get there, folks, I, I really have become fond of them organic brown eggs. You need to put your pot on that stove, get you some water boiling before you ever think about putting them eggs in there, okay? Make sure it is boiling. Then you can put them in a spoon or you can place them ever so gingerly in there. And we're gonna let them boil 10 minutes at the least. Here we go, we got this here egg. Now y'all have heard me call it a cackleberry, a rooster bullet, and some hen fruit. So we're just gonna take, try to get right in the center and just cut right through there. See how they come out when they're good and chilled like that? So get them all mashed up really good. And then next is gonna come on the goodness. So we're gonna put them right there in the middle. I want you to pan over and look at that dog, Shan. What is that dog's name? Duke. Duke. He has his own line of mayonnaise now, Duke's. Next, we're gonna add some relish. And folks, you got to be having some kind of mustard. Now you can use that spicy brown mustard, Dijon mustard, but I'm gonna use about this much. Now, remember when we was telling you there was one that was extra devilish in this deal? Guess what it is? It is deviled ham. And next comes the mixing apparatus. Just make sure you get it all in there. So we got our little eggs in the little deal. We got all our little fellers ready to be loaded there. So just take your knife and cut the corner of this right out of there. And then Shan says make them pretty. So I'm just gonna make them like that right there. all out, we're going to use us some smoked paprika. Mm. Would you pipe us in some of that there bunny hop music? Look out! At any important meal, what is something that's gotta be on the table? And it is very special to me, and that is bread. This thing will make perfect bread every time if you'll just follow the instructions, because when you put that water in there and warm it, you wanna make sure that when you take that chef's temp and put it in there, you're getting 110 degrees. Then we can mix that yeast in there to proof it. Everything's gonna be good. One cup of water, two tablespoons of melted butter, and a half a cup of milk or cow juice and two tablespoons of sugar. One, two. Now, when you get this over to your stove, put it on medium low heat because we wanna gradually warm this up, we do. And this is tip number one, it is. Remember, that chef's temp. We gotta bring this temperature up to 110 and then we'll proof that yeast in there. We reached that magic temperature of 110 degrees. One tablespoon of dried yeast, which is nearly two of them packets, it is. Get that in there. We're gonna whisk this up just a tad. And then we're gonna set this in a warm spot for about five minutes and we're gonna let it proof itself. 
I've got three and a half cups of flour here and a teaspoon of salt. We're gonna put it in gradually and sort of fold it in as we go. So let me get a little flour on this board if it'll stay on there without blowing away. You just wanna fold this over and knead this. Just keep going back and forth because you, you don't wanna get this dried out, but you do want it to be a, to where it's very pliable. Just place this in there, get you a warm, wet dishcloth or a paper towel Lay right over the top. We're gonna to let this rise for 15 minutes. If you're gonna cook these in the house, preheat your oven to 400 degrees. We're gonna cook them for about 20 minutes. When you get to that golden brown point or you're about 15 minutes in the oven, be sure and get that probe out because you want to probe that bread. Yes, you do. We're going to try to get that between a temperature of 200 and 210. That's when your bread's going to be at its best. He was in there taking a nap. Look here. Would you like a piece of bread? Oh yeah, it's worth waking up for, wasn't it? Uh -huh. Oh, you want another one? Okay. Thank you, buddy. We are very thankful to have you. We are. Something that always graced our table at Easter. My mother made a big old corn and ware dish of it, she did, and that was scalloped potatoes. First, you need to start out with a pretty good saucepan over some medium heat and three and a half cups of cow juice. And we're gonna warm it first. Don't walk off and leave it. Don't go like, oh, they're hunting Easter eggs. I gotta go with them. No, your job is in the kitchen to make the scallop potatoes. So just warm it through. This is cooked ham, it is. I'm just gonna layer out here on the grill so it can get a little heat, get a little flavor. Three tablespoons of butter, keep stirring. We don't want that milk to scorch. But so we're gonna add some flour gradually and stir. I just need you to stir that till you get a really smooth, even consistency. The secret ingredient, French onion dip. Now there's whole 16 ounce in the tub. Take you five russet potatoes. Now I've done them both ways, but we took the peeling off these today. And then I just want you to slice them in rounds about a quarter inch thick. Lightly grease your casserole dish or your Dutch oven, whatever you're gonna put this in, and you need to layer half of your potatoes in there right now. Half of the French onion dip mixture goes on top. Remember that ham we had there on the grill? We just brought it over here and diced it into sort of bite-sized pieces we did, and just sprinkle it around here on top of this first layer of everything, and somebody found out that there was some hit the ground of two cups of grated mozzarella cheese. Take one of them and let's go ahead and sprinkle all the way around. Some shredded Parmesan. Get you about half of that cup full. It's time to layer the rest of them potatoes on there. And you're gonna take that casserole dish that you've got it in and you're gonna cover it with a lemon foil. You are. Slip it in the oven, cook it about 45 minutes. But you know me, we outside.
Remember, this recipe and a lot of other good recipes are in our cookbook, Faith, Family, and the Feast. We do have two more other than that one. The first one, The Tasty Cowboy, and the new book that just come out, Comfort Food, The Cowboy Way. But the cheesy goodness that runs all the way throughout, Sadie says, is a, is a winner every time. You know, our final selection for our Easter episode today really comes sort of as a shock to me if I'd have planned on this maybe a year ago. And what is it? The Brussels sprout. Shan loved them, and I'm thinking, I'll cook them for her, but I really don't like them. But folks, I have found a recipe and changed these things to where I could eat them seven days a week. They are that good. Most of these Brussels sprouts, I think you need to take at least the outer leaf off of them. Cut just the bottom part of that core off of it, and then just slice them right in half. Well, I started off by taking me about six slices of bacon, cutting them lengthwise right down the middle, and then just dicing it right back up. Put them in that Dutch oven, let them brown until they're about half done, and then remove them. Do not get rid of any of that bacon grease, because we need that. Add three tablespoons of butter to the bacon grease. Then we're just gonna take this side of them little Brussels sprouts and just lay them right down in that butter and that bacon grease. And this is where really the magic happens. You know, a lot of recipes you're gonna see for Brussels sprouts are roasted in the oven. The biggest difference here is they're searing in that bacon grease and butter, which is gonna give them that charred effect right there on the bottom. Then it sort of caramelizes with that butter. But we're gonna what? We're gonna give them a little shake of seasoning before they go in that oven. And I like to sear them about three or four minutes over about medium. And remember that bacon I was telling you about? Now this is what I call cooked about half done. So just go to sprinkling that around on top of it anywhere it wants to fall. Now if you're in the house, preheat that oven to 375 and just slide it in there and let's get to cooking. You're probably gonna go about 25 to 30 minutes. First of all, I'm gonna get one of these out here and I wanna show you that char on the bottom where that is soaked up in there with all that butter and bacon grease. You know, right there when you get that thing out of the oven, just be sure and sprinkle you some of that Parmesan all over it. I really do like that char that it's got there on it. So, Mage, I know y'all are boycotting vegetables. You're the only one over here. Big is plumb over there. He's mad about it. So, I'm just gonna go ahead and try me a bite. Mm. Tastes nothing like the Brussels sprouts you used to try to get me to eat, Shan. These probably would become my most favorite Easter side dish right here because don't get no better than that. The bacon, the butter, when you bake them like that, it's just a great thing. Make me want to break into a He Has Risen dance. Oh, yes. Get it up, get it up. Yes, uh-huh. Woo! That is some good stuff it is. Now, if y'all got other ways that y'all cook Brussels sprouts, please let me know, cause Shan, she love a Brussels sprout. But the, ki the kicker is you have to make it not taste like Brussels sprouts. That is true. For you. Yes, that's right. Maybe put some chocolate on it or some ice cream. But again, I'd like to very special shout out and a thanks to the folks at Chef's Temp for sponsoring this video. Cause folks, be sure and look at them things, get you one of them. They'll make you the perfect cook they will. But also, I think we should at this time Remember what this day celebrates. Remember it is about a risen savior. And uh, folks, I count on that every day because uh, I need a lot of help most days and he's always up there. It's a hotline, it is. All you gotta do is call on him. He'll reach out and touch you, he will. But it is with great pride, honor, and privilege that I tip my hat to all the service men and women and all the veterans that have kept that old flag flying over camp. And remember what I always tell you. We need to be better people, better neighbors, good friends to everyone. And it starts with me, and it starts with you. God bless you, each and every one, and I'll see you down the Easter Trail. This video was in part sponsored by the Grumpy Schnauzer Association. Yes, even this one. That's him, it's so grumpy. God bless you, each and every one, and I'll see you down the cheesy scalloped onion. Ooh, ain't got no scalloped onion in it.
God bless you each and every one, and I'll see you down the Green Onion and Ham Scallop Bait Trail. That is wrong again.